Hello there. Um, I hope you just finished or recently finished watching another video called The Future Value of an Annuity because I'm going to assume that you watched that video so that I don't have to go in as much detail on this video. Um, and so if you haven't watched the other one, I'm afraid maybe I'll be going too fast or maybe it will be confusing, okay? And I hate confusing students, so please watch The Future Value of, a, an, of an Annuity first if you have not already done so. Okay, well welcome to this video. This one's called the present value of an annuity. And in this situation, um, the present value is talking about how much do you need to invest now, like right now, today, to provide something like a regular payment, an annuity, and to provide an amount of money that you want, okay? How much do you need to invest now to have a certain amount of regular payment coming back to you? It's kind of weird, eh? It's almost like when uh, when someone retires, they often think about how much will I get per month in the future? How much do I need to invest now so that I will get a certain amount per month in the future when I retire? Okay, so that's that's when these kind of questions become uh, pretty popular. Okay, so a few words here. Uh, PV stands for the present value. It's the amount of the investment that must be invested now. Here's the formula right here. And notice this formula looks a lot like the formula in the last lesson. Um, R is just like before. It's the regular withdrawal that will be made in dollars. It would be the money that would be coming to you on a regular basis because you had previously invested it. Okay? It's a little bit confusing sounding. Um, the formula looks very similar. It's actually a, just a rearrangement of the present value of the future value formula, but I'm just going to go with this formula for now, and uh, so for the sake of keeping this video a little shorter, okay? Um, everything applies just like in compound interest and in the last video. Um, interest rate is still the same thing. It's going to be a decimal, and it's per compounding period, okay? So if, it, if they said 5% compounded semi-annually, you would look over at semi-annually here and say, oh, 0 0.05 is 5%, and I need to divide by the word, which was two times per year. Semi-annually was the word. That means two times per year. Okay, 0 0.025 would be the, <clears throat> the value you would put for I if they said that. And if they said it's going to be 10 years, you would say, oh, I need to go 10 years times semi-annually, which is twice a year. So n would be the total number of compounding periods. In this case, it would be 20. Okay, let's go to an actual question now. We're going to do two questions together, and hopefully that's going to help you understand how to use this formula to find present value questions, okay? I'm going to bring the formula over right away, just so we have it right away. And uh, maybe I'll put it right here. Let's read the question. It is small font here. I did that on purpose so I could squeeze it all on here. Jen's annuity pays $2,700 at the end of each year for four years, starting one year from now. The annuity earns 6.5% compounded annually. So the word is annually. Determine the present value of the annuity. Okay. As soon as they say determine the present value of the annuity, you're going to need this formula. And of course, in the, in the course that you're taking, we will give you this formula, at least in my course. Okay, You will have this formula. You don't need to memorize this. Okay. If you were taking the university level course, then I think in some schools you would have to memorize this. But we don't do that to you. We're going to let you have this formula. Okay. But you just have to know which formula to use Okay, and when. So here we go. Present value formula. Um, I'll see if I can fit it in if I write it like this. Remember R is the regular payment and it's $2,700 as we saw up above. Feel free to push pause if you don't believe me. 1 minus bracket 1 plus. Now we want to find I. Okay, remember I is equal to the percent. It said 6.5 percent. I'm going to change it into a decimal. 0 0.065 divided by the word which was annually. Well, that's just 0 0.065. That was easy. If they had said semi-annually, you would have divided by 2. If they said quarterly right here, you would have divided by 4. But in this case, they just said annually. Gotta love that. Okay. Now, 
Here we have a negative n. Be careful, that little negative is often forgotten. So it's negative n. Well, what is n? I'm going to go over here. Remember, n is the number of compounding periods. So we're talking uh, four years altogether, OK? And instead of dividing by the word, you times by the word. What was the word? It was annually. 4 times 1 is 4, obviously. So you just write negative 4 up here. <coughs> Put our square bracket. And underneath that is i, which is something we already found. It was just 0 0.065. OK, now here you have to make a decision how you want to type this in on a calculator. I just started up my trusty calculator here. I'm going to do what's inside the brackets here first. So it's, hmm, I hope I can use this. OK, here we go. 1.065. This is the point on videos where I often make mistakes. So, and then I get a lot of comments down below. So I'll try and not make one. Uh, so 1.065 is what's inside the brackets. If you added those up, you would get 1.065. To the exponent, remember bed mass? Well, exponents come next. To the negative 4. So to the exponent, here it is. To the exponent, negative 4. On this calculator, I have to push 4 and then negative. But on fancier, newer calculators, um, you just push negative 4 in that order. There we go. It's a crazy looking decimal. Don't worry about it. Keep as many decimal numbers as you can. Um, in this case, wow, I'm going to have to go 1 minus this decimal right here. So I might just have to memorize. <clears throat> Let's see, could I? I could use the memory, I suppose. I'll just remember, hmm, I'll show you what I have here. 2700, and in square brackets we have 1 minus, let's look at that number again, 0 0.77732. 0. 0 0.77732. The more decimals you keep, the better. Divided by 0 0.065. Okay, so now I'm going to go 1 minus. Some calculators have a button down below that say answer, ANS, and literally you can hit that button now and it would put that 0 0.77732 automatically and it would use all of the decimals that we had before. This calculator doesn't seem to have the answer button, it does have a memory button. But I am just trying to keep as many decimals as possible. Okay, so it's point two 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 six eight is what this is. Now just for the sake of being quick, I'm gonna take the number that I just got and multiply it by the number in front. Multiply 2700 and divide by 0 0.065. 0 0.065 and hopefully, I'm going to write this answer down, 9249.78. 9249.78. Remember, this is money we're talking about, so I'm going to put a dollar sign. $9,249.78. That's how much she would need to invest now in order to, um, that would, that's how much she'd need to invest now in order to have a payment coming to her of $2,700. Okay? Um, let's see here. For four years, yes. But it would only be once a year. Okay, starting one year from now, no problem. How much will Joey earn in interest from his annuity? Okay. Well, if you want to know the interest, how much interest you've earned, just pretend that you didn't get any interest at all. Pretend you just put underneath your bed $2,700. And how often did you put that 2700 It says up above at the end of each year for four years. So just once a year, or annually, for four years. Well, what's 2,700 times four? 10,800. 10,800. So the interest that Joey made is really the difference between this number and this number.
the difference between those two numbers. Okay? So we could take 9249.78 and subtract, what was it again? 10,800, and that's a nice even number, 10,800. And the difference between the two numbers is $1,550.22. $1,550.82. That is the amount of interest that he made. And I just said the word he, and you've probably realized on this video that it says Joey right here. It was supposed to be Jen. It went from Jen to Joey. I apologize. Will you forgive me? I do not want to make this video again or edit it. But just here's the final answer, okay? How much will Jen earn in interest from her annuity? Here's the amount that she would earn by, by putting $2,700 away for four years. Okay, I'm going to stop there and go to the next question. We are not done yet. You're welcome to go ahead and practice these questions if you have practice questions already. But for anybody that wants a second question, feel free to stay with me. Great. If you're still staying with me, then welcome. Let's keep going. Thanks for keeping me company. Sophie is converting her RRSP, that's hard to say, into an income fund. She wants to receive $1,500 every six months. By the way, that's semi-annually, every six months, for the next 20 years, starting six months from now. She's guaranteed an interest rate of 6.25% compounded semi-annually. How much must Sophie deposit now? Uh, as soon as you see the now part, you know that you need the present value formula. Okay? How much must Sophie deposit now to pay for her, the annuity? Okay, let's put in all the numbers in the right spots. She wants to receive this much money every six months. So the R is the regular payment. She wants to receive $1,500 every six months. Write in all the other numbers. 1 minus 1 plus. Okay, I. What is I? It's the percent, 0 0.0625, 6.25%. You divide by the word. The word was every six months, which is semi-annually. Divide by two. If you don't like doing that in your head, just do it using your trusty calculator. 0 0.0625, let's divide by two. We get 0 0.0325. Okay, that is I. That is what I equals. So I have to write it in right here too. I'm going to run out of room. 0 0.03125. Double check, make sure I wrote the right thing in. It's so easy to make little mistakes on this stuff. Um, Got to move this over. <laughs> okay, we cleaned up. All right. Now it's to the negative. Don't forget the negative sign. That looks like a terrible negative sign. It looks huge. But anyway, negative n. What is n? Well, it is happening every six months for 20 years. So 20 times the word. The word is semi-annually. So 20 times 2, that's 40. We're going to have a negative 40 up here, folks. And all of that will be over top of i, which is 0. 0.0. Three, one, two, five. Some quick calculator work will get you the answer. This was the hard work here, people. At this point, it's just a matter of using your calculator properly. Everybody's got a different calculator, too. So here we go. We've got our calculator. Let's start punching things in here. One, do what's inside the brackets first. One plus point zero three one two five. That equals that number. And then we want to go to the exponent negative 40. To the exponent, uh, in this calculator, you have to go 40 and then the negative. But other fancier calculators, you just go 40 or negative 40. But anyway, we have to live with whatever we have, with whatever technology we have. We're just lucky to have this stuff. OK, so I'm going to memorize this number as many decimals as I can. Um, 
terrible at memorization, though. 0 0.292039. 292039. I'm going to go 1 minus 292039. That equals that number. And then we want to take that number and multiply it by 1,500, then divide by the bottom number. So multiply by 1,500. then divide by 0 0.03125. And here we go, 33,982. And how many pennies? And, and 13 cents. This is money. So you would have to say um, that Sophie in a sentence, it'd be really nice to say it in a sentence. Sophie would need to deposit $33,982.13 in order to receive $1,500 twice a year for the next 20 years. Okay? I hope that makes sense, and I hope I didn't make too many mistakes along the way. I am known to do such thing. Okay, good luck and practice this stuff. Once you practice, it becomes easy. Take care.